Hi there. I'm sure you've come across this all familiar problem. You have a hospital computer system and it's driving you crazy. I mean, come on. Why can't these things be simple like Apple? Why can't they be useful like Microsoft? You see, the problem is everybody knows that there's a problem with hospital information systems, but there isn't an infinite amount of money or time or resources to fix them. But I can show you a simple way to start making things better. In fact, terrible hospital computer systems are actually a global problem. In an annual survey of primary physicians in the United States, they find that there is a very strong correlation with higher levels of stress and lower levels of job satisfaction amongst physicians who use electronic medical records. In Finland, where everybody is on an electronic medical record, and you would think that because everybody's on it, they've got it right, in fact, it's found that there's a low level of physician satisfaction, that this satisfaction is associated strongly with poor usability. Now, this usability, what is this thing that I just referred to? Well, in ergonomics, it's a concept that refers to the quality attribute that assesses how easy the user interface is to use. This is a little different than utility and usefulness, but they are related concepts. But for today, I think I just want to focus on usability because this is an area where you can actually have a meaningful impact. Now, it's all well and good to talk about usability, but you're going to have to do some usability testing and you're, in order to really prove to the IT wonks that there is something wrong with the system. And so for this part, you're going to need some help. You need somebody with some expertise. I've done a number of usability evaluations across a variety of different hospital systems as well as even different products like ventilators and, um, and infusion pumps. And there is a well-written body of literature on how to approach usability testing. There are a variety of different approaches, starting from simple to much more complex and time-consuming. Heuristic walkthrough is probably the simplest from the point of view of a, use of a, of, um, a usability test. A lot of systems like user interfaces on computer web pages have a well-established set of criteria for what constitutes good usability. And you can just simply go to the website and go to the and use this as a checklist and just say, does the system have all the things that it's supposed to do? Now, that requires that there already be a preset number of heuristic criteria that have been validated in the past by other people. And the system you're, you're using may not have that. And also, it's usually something that with somebody with a little bit more experience is really more um, better served to do this. And it doesn't always necessarily capture the user experience. It just gives you a broad overview of whether the system is good or not. Questionnaires, such as surveys, which can be done on paper or online, are really good ways to get a general sense of the overall satisfaction. But the challenge with surveys is that you may not get um, all the granular detail that you're looking for. Because often with users, it's the little details that drive them nuts that really is what drives the usability down. Um, so surveys are okay to approach, but they may not be the only thing you should do when you're assessing usability. Similarly with interviews, when you bring people into a room and ask them open-ended questions, you get a general sense of the overall feelings of things. but because people are separated in time and space from the system in front of them, they may not remember all of the individual things. And frankly, I found that a lot of times these end up just being long bitch sessions and you don't really get the information you're looking for to really help improve the system. Um, getting into more time, time, uh, 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 time intensive processes than things like direct observation where you just sit there with a tablet and you can use your heuristic criteria, watching people interact with the system and try and, and s divine where they're having trouble with the system and what challenges they're having. You can be either fly in the wall or you can be a bit more uh, interactive and ask them questions as they're going along. Um, but really the point is to be a little bit more standoffish and just observe. There are other technical ways you can do similar observation typey evaluation and this is using things like eye tracking technology to see where people are looking on the screen to give you a sense of what areas are the high value, high, high um, 
important uh, places on the screen that people are looking. Or you can do things like uh, mouse tracking, um, running a program in the background to help keep track of where the, um, where the mouse is going and what is being clicked on. Um, but this uh, can often be a little bit more uh, cumbersome and it can sometimes get in the way of the operation of the computer if it requires a lot of um, uh, processor bandwidth. Probably I think the best bang for your buck in terms of doing a really good usability evaluation is to use a process called Think Aloud. Now the concept itself is pretty simple. It, it actually incorporates a lot of the things that we've just talked about. It's an observation method where somebody sits and watches a user interact with the system, but at the same time you also have voice recording and, and, uh, um, and uh, screen capture of the person interacting with the system. The key though is unlike observation, you actually sit there and continuously cue them to what are you doing now, what are you thinking now, because whatever they're thinking is the things that are driving them crazy. After you've got this, this uh, recording of all of their interactions with the system, you can then sit down uh, after the fact and go through all of the different usability criteria that you've set and encode for those issues to try to identify things that are, um, that are causing problems with the usability. As an example of a usability evaluation, here's some of what your data would look like at the end. Now this was a study that I did and I actually used not just a think aloud method, but I also included a survey. But unlike what I said about the surveys before, the survey in, in my case, I included a screenshot of the, of the screen that I was asking questions uh, about. And instead of just a Likert scale of very satisfied, very unsatisfied, I left a lot of space. I wanted, I actually asked for a lot of free text and then I took the free text and encoded it using the same criteria so I could get a total of both think aloud um, uh, usability score as well as the survey evaluation score. Probably the best part about, about think aloud that I, that, I've, uh, that I believe gives it the best bang for your buck is in order for you to get really good data, you don't need a lot of people. A half an hour per person, eight people, and you usually got more than enough data to run with in order to get a really good sense of where the pain points are on your system. And so you can, you can mix and match these systems however you want, and at the end of the day, as I think, think aloud is probably the best way to go in terms of getting the most, out of, most value for the time that you're spending. And as well, you get a wide variety of quotes, which when you're trying to talk to IT about problems that they have with the system, quotations of patient, of user experience go a long way in really driving the points home of the things that people like and don't like about the system. And they give flavor to the numbers. It's, it's one thing to show that you know, the layout is terrible or you know, the response time of the system is, is really bad. But if you can give a quote from somebody who says things like you can see here, man, that just really drives the point home for them. We really start to understand that there's a problem. Now that you have some tools, take what you know and share. Help your IT department. I mean, as much as I've just kind of been hacking on them a little bit, in reality, most IT folks really do want to do a good job. They know the system is a problem. They really would like some help from people to try to make things better. So work with them to help them do a better job, to help make their computer system better, and to stop making hospital computer systems terrible.